Last week, we brought you out to Connecticut for the christening of the USS Idaho, the first United States Navy christening of an Idaho in more than 100 years. And the new boat is a Virginia-class submarine, so in short, it's a warship, and they're built to take out enemy ships, collect intelligence, and support special operations. And it'll hold a 132-person crew. And on Saturday, it was christened into the fleet. Anna and Caldwell had a question, though. Several of you did. Anna, though, asked, who is the lady who christened the Idaho with the champagne? It's a great question, Anna from Caldwell. So we learned she is the wife of a longtime Navy vet. And the christening, it wasn't champagne. It was actually water from Idaho lakes. But our story today is about who we met after the christening, a connection to the USS Idaho crew from the 1940s. Here's Andrew Bartline. in an oversized Atlantic Coast warehouse. A building submarines like we have never built before. Nationwide crowds on deck for a celebration. Idaho's contribution to national security. More than half of the commissioned Navy fleet owes them one word, nuclear. Gives us an unfair advantage against every potential adversary. And the latest crew? The gem of the fleet. Will pilot the designation long overdue. So if I could get a big round of applause for that. For nearly 80 years, the name's been dormant. It's high time we give honor and again christen another USS Idaho. A name that could never be lost. With his buddies. That's the truth he's in a scrapbook. Here and here. Saved through Eileen. Yeah. Her husband, Al Wurdzek, served on the previous USS Idaho in World War II. Al was one of four living crew members invited to the new ship's christening. It would have been really great if he could have made it, so. Al's son, Chris, says he died nearly three years ago, a hero. He was, but he never thought he was. Humble strength always has a source. Can't get away from Idaho. <laughs> it's where Al's parents met and married. It's where Al trained after enlisting. It's the boat where Al served. They kept track of, of their kills, their submarines. Well worn from battle. This is the one time that it did get damaged enough to have to go get repaired. But never once was she sunk. The Japanese claimed to have sank her three times or more. They'd get patched up and they were right back in the fight. A full embodiment of the name down to the final second of World War II. When the surrender happened with Japan, they had the surrendered signing on the Missouri battleship, and they brought the Idaho in and parked it right next to the Missouri, kind of as a, I thought you said you sank the Idaho, it's right there. A piece of history Chris pulled from the scrapbook for himself. This is to certify that Al Wurdzek was aboard the USS Idaho in Sagami Wan and Tokyo Bay during the initial phase of the occupation of Japan and the signing of the terms of the Japanese surrender. And it's signed by the captain and first officer. Big shoes to fill. Pretty cool. It's a task now left up to the next Idaho crew, and they know it. The BB-42? The battleship? Even to sailor Robert Bossian. Oh yeah, it came with a bunch of surprises. Proudly from the panhandle. I like being part of the Idaho, the state, and being part of the crew. Uh, makes me feel a little bit more prideful that I know what the namesake means. I know how to carry myself as an Idahoan and bring that to the boat and share Idaho with the rest of the crew. It's history that doesn't fade. Once again, USS Idaho and protected by former Governor Dirk Kempthorne. The seamless connection between crew and citizens is amazing. Kempthorne shows them what's left of the last USS Idaho, what can still be seen, felt, touched. This is one of the spots they visited on, on, in June of 23 the Veterans Memorial Cemetery. They went and visited your husband's. They did. Isn't that amazing? These sailors had never met Al or his family. I'm just honored to be part of it. Even down to the smallest details, there's Idaho. Yeah! Loud and proud. And it just brought all those 
Ooh. All those feelings back, yeah. A lifetime later, the word Zicks know they can't shake it. No, no, it keeps coming back. And may she endure forever. Esto Perpetua. The USS Idaho is still due a year of sea trials and then the official commissioning ceremony will keep you posted. But from there, the submarine would join the United States Navy fleet. And you all had a lot of great things to tell us about the latest USS Idaho. So we thought we'd give a little extra time to the comments we did not get to. Like this one from Craig, who said, quote, Thank you for covering and reporting on the Idaho sub. It's good to see the real Idaho natives got to take part with respect. John wrote to us saying, I liked your story about the USS Idaho. I spent four years on the USS Augusta, SSN 710 out of Groton in the late, or Groton, I should say, Groton, Connecticut in the late 80s, early 90s, and was proud to see a new sub named after my home state. Brings back memories. Thank you. Well done. Uh, a few of us, uh, a few of you, I should say, were also wondering the same thing as Mike said. That was awesome that former Governor Kemp Thorne was at the christening. Did Crapo and Rish go to the USS Idaho Commission? Uh, actually, we, do, we don't think they were there, but we do know that Governor Brad Little and Congressman Russ Fulcher, they were able to make it to Connecticut alongside some other politicians from Connecticut as well. But no, neither Senator or Congressman Mike Simpson were there. Simpson did just miss a vote recently for a scheduled medical appointment. We're not sure if that was related to the absence, but thank you for the comments as always. We'll get to more later.